Hi there friends, this video is about how to foster creativity within a lab group. And by a lab group I mean an individual research lab that's typically led by a PI. Now this video is not just addressed at the PIs themselves, but also at the PhD students and graduate students and technical staff and whoever is part of that lab, because many of the points that I'm going to be addressing pertain to the lab as a whole. Of course, that is still within the understanding that the tone that the PI sets is going to be quite important. But this is about the creativity at the level of the entire research lab. So it should be broadly relevant to a bunch of people. Now, creativity, I understand to mean that already existing facts or points are being connected in ways that lead to something novel and usable, where usable means usable within the context of the particular science that you are pursuing. And in other videos I've already mentioned how creativity is important in the scientific process and also how it can enter at various ways from the creation of ideas to all the way to communicating your ideas to a broader audience and also translating the ideas to maybe products. So in the following I want to go through a bunch of points that I think are important for creativity at the level of the lab group. Now, by no means do I mean to imply that I have mastered this and this, that this all works perfectly in, in our group, but these are just certain things that I've collected over a certain period of time that I think are probably gonna be important and generally applicable. And if you have other points that I forgot, please feel free to let me know in the comments. Now, the very first and probably most important point is that creativity can really only unfold when there is a healthy lab culture present in the first place. So the lab should be a place where everybody feels comfortable and safe and is free to communicate their ideas. Because if the lab is not a healthy environment, people's minds will typically be busy with other things like how am I going to get through this day and things like that. And so, of course, having a healthy lab as opposed to a toxic lab environment is going to be by far the most important ingredient in having group level, lab level creativity. And of course, that hinges a lot on the tone that the PI sets. The next point is valuing creative input. So this means that if a lab member says something that is contributing a new idea, then this input should, should be valued and it should be rewarded and praised. And that praise or reward should not just come from the PI, but it's also important that other lab members express their appreciation so that there is a general atmosphere created that, well, new ideas, they are very welcome, even if most of those ideas are not gonna be brilliant because the way to get good ideas is to have many ideas in the first place. So creation of ideas by itself is valuable. And I think that that just needs to be communicated to people and there needs to be a general setting in the lab where this is understood. Providing freedom is important. Now, most lab, lab members will be busy with tasks that are basically prescribed because of the grants that fund them or the fellowship that supports them. But beyond fulfilling the tasks of the project that funds people, it is very important to give people freedom to pursue whatever they want. And I think this is something, for example, that we practice and discuss and when people come in in this lab, as long as you make steady and satisfactory progress on the project that funds you and for which you or I in the end will have to write a report, you are free to pursue whatever you want as long as it you know, fits within the general perspective of this lab. And you can also collaborate with anybody you like. And so I think this is a degree of freedom that is important for unfolding creativity. So this is something that people are told, for example, when they join my lab, but it's up to individual people to actually do this. So this is something that is up to the individual PhD student or postdoc or student or technical staff to actually hmm, pursue on their own. Flat hierarchies is also important because if the hierarchies are sort of flat, then it means people are much more ready to speak up. Um, one example was that my PhD advisor, many years ago now, he told me that he expects me to basically prove him wrong on as many occasions as possible. 
Of course, I didn't like it when that happened, but he was always ready and he embraced it. And I thought it was pretty amazing many years later when I reflected on this, that this was one of the first things he told me. So I think this is excellent and it sort of establishes this. We are on basically the same level and that's quite important. But it's not just between PI and postdoc and PhD student. It's, there's other hierarchies possible in the lab, namely between senior postdocs and even younger postdocs or postdocs and PhD students or PhD students and undergraduate uh, research, uh, researchers. So there's always this possibility for hierarchies to develop. And so it's very important to keep these as flat as possible so you don't stifle innovation coming from younger and newer people because they may have very good ideas because they are sort of unburdened by knowledge. <laughs> so they can come up with some crazy out of field, of field ideas that actually can end up being quite useful and novel. Having a diverse team is important because creativity, as I mentioned, comes from connecting different points that already exist. And you know, the more brains can, um, that can think about some particular connection, the better the probability that something actually comes about. So this means basically you have to have different inputs and different inputs are more likely from people that have different life experiences. And this can be along any kind of dimension of human diversity, people from different countries, people speaking different languages, people having different sort of background, even if they come from the same country, different subject backgrounds, uh, but really anything you can imagine under human diversity is going to be helpful for this. So I think this is the part, the idea, creative part, where diversity in the lab really can matter a lot. It is less so maybe in the day-to-day -day operations because um, doing science is very highly codified. You know, how to operate a certain machine is not going to be depending on your background so much. Um, so I think, the, but the, the creative aspects of the science, this is where this diversity can, can really make a huge contribution. Now, another point is resources, having sufficient resources to have people play around with new ideas, setting up small explore, exploratory experiments is important. So if the lab has no spare resources, then it will at least be difficult to act on ideas in terms of experiments and studies. You can still write viewpoint and opinion papers and things like that, but if you want to actually act on ideas, without having to write a grant first, then it's good if the lab has some, um, some base level resources. And this base level funding, of course, is different from in different countries. In Germany, the situation is typically quite good. Um, but, you know, this can also be managed by, you know, getting some indirect costs held back or basically saving some money for the occasion when you really want to pursue some crazy idea. And of course, pursuing some of these ideas in exploratory experiments can fuel further innovation and eventually also the writing of grants. Broad inspiration and diverse inputs is important. So again, <laughs> creativity means connecting things in novel and interesting ways that are um, already there. So basically this all is depending on broad inputs. Now this broad inputs can happen in various ways. You could, for example, go attend seminars in other departments. That's going to be quite time consuming. An easier way is to discuss papers that are slightly or completely outside of the realm of the research being done in a particular lab in a journal club, for example, and then start a discussion on a particular topic and how it touches on your own research topic. This is something that we occasionally do. It, of course, can also happen by getting people into the group that have diverse backgrounds, that um, have different education in particular fields and come from different areas. It can also mean inviting artists, like artists in residence or philosophers in residence, so people with a radically different background from yours because they have in our lab been quite a source of ideas. So this is all about getting um, broader input than just basically reading the paper in, in papers and interacting with other scientists that work just in your specific field. You could also um, host uh, interdisciplinary workshops or invite people to the lab for maybe sabbatical visits or just to give talks in lab, or even online talks. This is a relatively 
low level of um, investment. So this has also happened in the past and has really uh, brought some very important stimuli to the group. Providing a dedicated space for creativity may be quite important so that people know that now is the time to be creative, the specific space made for creativity and development of ideas. We do that, for example, in our um, journal club, where at the end of the journal club session, we usually have a, a period of like 15, sometimes 30 minutes, where we just discuss how can we use what we have just read and make it better? How can we use it um, in our work? And how can we build on it? And what products can we directly develop from having read these papers? And this has in many cases led to published papers that came directly out of our uh, journal club session. So I think this is working because everybody knows <laughs> that um, in the end uh, of this session, it's not a surprise, there's just a dedicated space for this, but there's maybe other ideas how to do that. Maybe you can have like a Dropbox somewhere in the hallway where people can just drop ideas or can write it on a whiteboard or whatever. But I think it would be generally a good idea to have some space where people basically are triggered to have these ideas. It may also be important that the lab is led by example, not necessarily, but um, I, um, really enjoy <laughs> investing um, into development of ideas. I see it as part of my job. And so I also broadcast that basically to the group so people know that I value creation of ideas. And um, that can maybe also serve as an inspiration for others that think like, oh, maybe I can also have some ideas. It's not that magic. Um, you have to just allow yourself to um, connect different points and see what happens and play with these ideas. It's not a character trait only. <laughs> Maybe there's naturally more creative people than others, but creativity is also something that you can just allow to happen in your life and you can train it and you can get better at it. But that is something that I try to live basically by example in, in our group. For example, also by teaching a master's class on creativity. So thereby I learn <laughs> actually along with the students more about how to be more creative because there are certain techniques that you can use. That's it. That's sort of a run through to through some of the ideas that I had about how you can make your lab group more creative. Again, it's not just up to the PI, and the PIs have an important role in this, but it's also up to everybody in the group to basically participate and buy into this concept. And if you have other ideas, something that is also important to try out, then please let me know in the comments. And with that, thanks for watching. See you in the next video.